This video is going to show you how to use Photo Story 3, which is a free download from Microsoft, to create a slideshow, which is actually a movie in this case. So the first thing you'll want to do is go out to Microsoft. So I just go out, type in Photo Story 3, which is two words, download. And then I make sure that I get it from the Microsoft.com site that says Microsoft.com, so I know I'm in the right place. And it says for Windows XP, but it works for computers XP and above. Just click download and be agreeable, then you're ready to go. Then I'm just going to go to my computer and search for Photo Story 3 and get the program, open up the program. And this is really nice because it is a WYSIWYG editor. I mean, it's just a really easy editor to go back and forth. So begin a new story. Next, first step is to import your pictures. So you have to just navigate to where your pictures are. You can do a control A to select everything in a folder, or you can hold the control key to select random ones, or you can hold the shift key down, select one, hold the shift key, and it will select everything in between. So it's importing my pictures. Once my pictures are imported, it's really easy just to drag and drop them along this storyline down at the bottom into a different order. Or I can use this X to delete one, or I can reorder them by hitting the little forward and back arrows here. That will just move it one at a time. If I want to just grab hold of one instead and drag and drop it, that can be easily done. And again, as I said, you can hit an X. You'll notice that you can rotate a picture here in case one comes in sideways. You can do a few edits on like red eye and um, correct some color levels, but it's not a great editor. You may um, need to take it into Photoshop first or something like that. There's also some editing here that you can crop. So once you're done with that, I'm just going to click on the very first one and click the next. And in the next step, you can add titles. And you can add the titles to the bottom, the center, the top. You can also put it on the left or the right or the center. And you can change your font and the color. I'm going to change this to white. And I can change it to different sizes and different fonts. Anytime I want to change what it says, I just highlight here. I can click here to go to the next one, or I can just click down here. You'll also notice on this step, besides being able to add titles, so you can um, change a few uh, effects on here. If you want to change everything to black and white, or one of these other effects, you can do that in this step. Once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and hit the next button. And in this step, you can actually add some narration. So I can click here and say, this is a picture of a sticky geranium, which we're on the trail quite a bit. You can type your notes here in case you want to read them. They don't show up in the final product. They are just to help you as you're doing your narration. Then you can click Next. You can also preview it and listen to it to see if you like how you narrated that. This is a picture of a sticky. If you don't like it, you can click here and it will de delete the narration. And it will delete the narration just on this slide. So if you had narration on other slides, it would only delete it on that one, which is kind of nice. In this step, you can also customize the motion. This is where you can set your transitions. You can pick different transition types and how many seconds that transition will last. There are quite a few different ones here. If you don't set it, it's automatically set on a crossfade. You'll see motion and duration too, which is the pan and zoom. Right now this is starting out big and zooming in a little bit, and I can preview that and see how that is zooming in kind of on this individual. If I want to change it, I can click specify the start and the end, 
and I could zoom it in even more if I want. I can also set the number of seconds. Now with a long zoom, I don't want to set it too quickly or it can make people sick zooming in, zooming out, and all of this kind of thing. I can also set the start position to be the same as the end, and then it won't zoom at all. Or I can set the end position to be the same, I'm sorry, or as, the, as this previous picture, so it starts the same as the previous one. Or if it's the same as the end, then there is no pan and zoom. Now this pan and zoom can just pan across as well, if I and it will crop out whatever I don't have showing so I won't see the whole picture in this case I will just pan across the faces and I could zoom out too I could start one in and then zoom out to show everyone lots of different opportunities there when I'm done I save each picture and I go on to the next picture by clicking here when I'm completely done I click close on the next step, I can select music if I have some music in my uh, on my computer and pick that. I can also create music and I can pick from a variety of different styles of music. For example, Latin. Then I can pick what type of Latin, the Caribbean, what kind of uh, bands do I want, what mood, how fast of a tempo, the intensity. I can preview it here. And if I like the sounds of this, I click OK, and wherever I had my cursor, it clicks there and puts it all the way to the end. If I want to change music at any point, I click on the slide where I want to change it. Click Create, choose a different kind of music, and click OK. And this will fade out the one and bring in the new. And you can hear it bring in the new picture or the new music. So when you're finished with that, you're on the last step now. Oh, you'll notice that you can delete music. You can also put silence in here if you like, and that's under the create music and put in a section that has silence. So I'm going to click next. Oh, one last thing. Notice how you adjust the volume. If you have voiceover narration, you'll want to set this low enough so that you can hear your voice. So practice with that too. The very last one is how you want to save this and where you want to save it. Do you want to play back on your computer? Do you want a very small one to send in an email? Um, any of those right now, the setting is set for 640 by 480. I might want a higher quality and I can certainly do that. Notice that I 800 by 600 is what I prefer so that it has a little bit higher quality. Now I want to browse and save it where I want to find it. Right now it's going to be called photostory2.wmv in the videos. But I'm going to click browse so I can give this my own name and I could save it wherever I like. My OneDrive, my desktop, or as this says in the videos. And depending on how much, when I'm finished, then I click Next. Depending on how much music um, and uh, the voiceover narration, all of that is going to take a step. So it could take several passes. And then this is a WMV video, which will play back on a computer, um, a PC computer. Hope that helped you use PhotoStory.